It's just like just the audio quality. It just sounds so weird. It just it legit sounds like somebody's r- running right across like <laughs> my ceiling. Sretton, you're the worst. That's the show. Why? Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. Okay. So Hulu. Well, I found my intro. Hello, Brian. What's up, everyone, right. and welcome to the Anime Music Hive podcast, week 12 of the spring 2020 season. On this show, we'll be discussing the current season of anime every, every week. I'm your host, David, and joining me today, we have Stren. Hello, everyone! <laughs> Jesus. Next, we have Ku. Bro, that was so loud, but hello. Next Sounds like everybody's so hyped. Everybody's yelling out loud. Calm down, sorry, David, Shren. go ahead, continue. Jesus. Next, we have Brian. <laughs> what? And finally, we have Sasha. Yeah, I'm here. All right, so we have a lot to talk about today. So before we get to Tower of God and Glade Near, let me just mention real quick. Uh, so season two of um, Ultimate, of the Ultimate show that me and Strider oh, watching yeah. got announced, and then um, also mm-hmm. um, next this weekend we got uh, One Piece and Digimon coming back. So, like, is it the episodes that we're actually on now? Finally, or is I'm, it? I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Starting from the beginning. Okay. Because. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. So, well, we we can check, but they're back this this weekend. So, well, nice. We can add Digimon <laughs> back to the roster, possibly depending on how many shows we're talking yeah. about already. Yeah. So, you yeah, boy, will One Piece become One Piece? We'll find out. Stay we, tuned in the following weeks, folks. We shall. This see. is your One Piece expert. <laughs> Call me Gold Sasha. <laughs> the X is two since uh, Peter is uh, never here anymore. Don't. <laughs> All right. So that's gonna be it for right. the news. We're gonna dive right straight into Tower of God. Boy. Let's just start with that ending. I want to hear. Oh, I want to hear, hear everyone <laughs> rant about that ending. So whoever wants to start, go ahead. God, this man. Right, who called is it? Who called simping it? his life away, man? And then he just gets... I mean, I immediately started laughing <laughs> just because of just because of our previous conversations. I couldn't take it serious. It was just I don't know, dude. It was such BS. I mean. I just thought they were gonna finally gonna make it. Bob's gonna get what he wanted, and then this bitch just gets up and just yeets this guy off the. You know what's platform. even more fucked up? This bitch lied about having broken ass legs. <laughs> I'm saying, like, there's no. She's so shady. There's no way, right? Oh no, man. The legs weren't broken, but she <laughs> lied about being paralyzed. Fuck this hoe. I hope she For dies reals, worse man. than Ho did. <laughs> oh, oh, and Ho was the one that stabbed her ass. I know, right? Yeah. That's messed up, guys. Yeah, I mean, that was, wow, what a moment, right? Professor X, if you could have walked again, <laughs> that, that's it right there. <laughs> <laughs> the one pushing up all the X-Men's office mansion. Yeah. The only thing they had to do was rip off the wig when he was falling off, and just, you know, his last grasp is just the, is just the wig. Oh, my God. Reveals hey, Professor, but uh, Professor I will Xavier. say this. At least she was able to stand up for herself. That's oh. all I could say. <laughs> oh, God. Here we go. <laughs> oh. Okay, so... I What can I say? That that I don't know what's going to happen to Bond. I mean, obviously, he's going to stay alive somehow. But I think those uh weird... What, they call them dolphins, but they look more like seals. I think those guys are going to group together and just push this guy up to the surface. <laughs> Maybe just, like, shove a little bit harder than they need to. <laughs> <laughs> oh god um and then they, even even if like they actually you know like brought him back to the like the platform eh, do i don't know i don't know if we i don't really know if we're gonna see much of rachel anymore do you guys think we're gonna keep seeing rachel i think she's bro, gonna, oh, gonna, rachel gonna die rachel, she, i need some she, redemption bro like she, think, okay, will, will she be that. will she die here or or should, will she be like a final no, boss type of deal not final boss but she's gonna be in the background like nah nah bro okay. that wouldn't make sense this is what's gonna happen i got you all right okay i don't know the other princess's name the one that showed up and stomped yuri. the ground and was yuri the Yuri. best princess ever? The... Oh my god. You guys whoa, whoa, whoa. Sir, I, I'm still on team endorsing. You can't just nah, trade endorsing. I'm on yeah. team Yuri. Endorsing goes. Bro, That's I'm not in a hurry to be on team Yuri, okay? But <laughs> I'm okay with Yuri, both. 
Yuri, I think she's gonna stab her or actually paralyze her. I, because she's had bombs back this whole time. I think she's gonna be like, hey, a fellow princess of Jihad, it's you, Rachel. I hate you. And then she's gonna claw her face. So that's my prediction. Dude, Yuri, by the way, she is strong as life, dude. I, it's the best part. Dude, strong. I don't like the way she treats that hammer guy, though. He, he is a person of color, and she is treating him poorly. Are you talking about the hammer guy, or the guy that, uh, or the, um, like the... The hammer the guy. The okay. Yeah, the, one who, who, the one who killed Ren? That, that's my boy right there, man. How are they gonna kill Ren like that? Ren, the sheep guy? Yeah, yeah. sheep guy, dude. He He's sleeps also constantly. gay, I'm pretty sure, Curtin. The black guy with the hammer. He's gay? Apparently. Where'd that hammer. come from? I don't know. Just because he has a guy. hammer? <laughs> oh, the show. Oh, that's so... Oh. Can't, can't say it. It's okay. I don't know when. Uh, but when the what was the guy's name? Ren, the the sheep yeah, guy. Yeah, Ren. Ren. Yep. Dude, we we got smushed. I, when he, we got smushed, I immediately thought of pop tarts. I don't know why. What the? Fuck? I don't know. Pop tarts. <laughs> oh, I have no idea. It oh, just reminded me. Just, half. just flat. The like the the jelly inside is coming out with blood. In this case, I just immediately thought for some reason. So you flatten tarts. your pop tarts and it all comes out. Like that? Uh. That's yeah, pretty brutal. That was a nice death, though. I I'm glad our boy Hammer, um, he did his job. But man, yeah. that crew seems deadly. They do, except the except the uh, I forgot the guy's name already. The navigator. Navigator. <laughs> Wasn't he like Evan or something? I, I, yeah, like Evan Kill or something. Yeah. I think he's gonna be like Captain Yamamoto in an anime that we can't reference ever again, where <laughs> he seems like he's not that strong, but he's actually pretty OP. And if they get his powers. Combine with somebody else's, he'd be oh. pretty strong. It kind of reminds me of uh, Kenpachi in a way, where he has no idea where the hell he's going, even though this guy is supposed to be the navigator. Um, but you know, Kenpachi oh yeah, that's right. Well. I have no idea about this guy though. There, there you go, yeah. David. No Naruto reference, bleach. All right. Yeah, it's on the comeback guy. But yeah, what a wild episode. I mean, overall, the episode had great tension. I definitely thought a knock and Endorsey were in danger of dying. I thought Endorsey was going to miss her arm or something. It looked like in one scene. From the angle, I thought her arm got cut off by that blast. And I was like, no, she lost an arm. But then she didn't look. So I was like, oh, okay. That's okay, man. Nar uh, Naruto lost an arm. He's just fine. And we're back. Oh, my That's God. That's right. <laughs> Wait, but Sasuke's not. <laughs> That's right. true. Um, so... Sasuke can't hold two bags of groceries. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so real All quick. Right, so, uh... to, uh, real quick. Um, so, someone want to explain... Um, Han Song, so... No. Because <laughs> when he was in that one room with Evan, he was saying... Um, so, was Evan saying he knew... So, he knew about um, Ren running around the whole time, and then he also knew about Yuri and her team running. What was... Could someone explain what that, that was all about? Like, what, what's his Demon, what's his man. Name Machinations by this guy. I, I, I think what's going on is he knows how to play the game, and he knows Bon is this ultimate beast that's just kind of reserved himself so he's playing that game where he wants to be entertained he's probably ultra powerful and so he's just as intelligent if not more than yuri and her crew i think that's all it is i, I think he's just a massive schemer for jihad okay so you you think he's he's ultra powerful you don't think that like maybe he's not because i'm thinking maybe okay he's not ultra powerful but maybe he like he's trying to use everyone to, like, gain more power or something? Mm, potentially, but I still think he's really powerful. Like, remember, he confronted Sheep Guy, and Sheep Guy tried to attack him. Oh, he yeah. pretty much blew it away like it was nothing. So I think this guy's definitely powerful. His heel was bigger than the other one. <laughs> okay. Oh. Oh. Yeah. Is that, is that Here comes the You're comparing contest now, Stratton, huh? I'm just saying, dude. You're just saying about how strong this guy is. I mean, hey, they did the contest, not me. I didn't whip anything out. Hey, you know the old saying that King Jihad had, never reveal your eel. <laughs> uh, I remember that really well. <laughs> it seems like all like the creatures like in this, oh, actually besides like the, the sheep, like they're, because I still think that Bam's uh, creature or whatever it is, his uh, spirit animal is a turtle. But it seems like everybody oh. else has, like eels and... Things that that thing? water. Yeah, but the, yeah. that but bombs thing. That was like the he's the guard, the administrator. Though, that was the floor. The floor. Yeah. 
Oh yeah. Okay. Like, well, what was the, the Black the March? Sword. Wasn't it like a girl? No? Yep. Black oh, March yeah. Yeah, the oh, sword. Yeah. yeah, it was a girl. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, yeah, she's like uh-huh. half camel. Yes. Yeah. That's a, well, that's another thing though. Yuri was doing. I mean, basically, she's uh, she's just looking OP and not even using any kind of weapons. Oh, dude, she's way too OP. You don't you don't want to date that girl. And then, do you guys it. think Rack is OP? This man like one v a hundred with green guy on his back. I mean, I basically I, I think he's taking advantage of Parasol and he's making him look bad. And I wish he'd apologize for that. <laughs> I mean, oh, okay. I mean, yeah. the, the, uh-huh. the things the things that they're fighting too though they just remind me of Putty in uh, Power Rangers. Just they're there. They're nothing special about them. True that. They're just like uh, they're just you know waves of just pointless. Oh, stuff. what about Blue Turtle? Blue Turtle and that one guy who's from his family, but is uh, you know yeah, that, that, there's brother, some history there. Uh, I forgot about that. That's his cousin Theodore. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. Sounds all right, Theodore. The, but that that wasn't very. Uh, that uh, was he, kind of a brief. Just it was just a brief shot, wasn't it? They really didn't. Uh, he came with Yuri's group. Like, oh, did, he? did we know that? Yeah. I Are you know ruining that. for us? Brian? No, no, no. Like he legit is there with Yuri's group. Okay. Mm. In episode that. eleven, you say I'll I'll pull it over okay. you. Wow. I don't Wait. Know oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Didn't like that. Just didn't the hammer guy come and get him? Maybe. Maybe. I don't, I don't remember any of this at all, so, yeah. I actually God don't remember this either. Guys. Jesus. You guys are horrible people. Yes. Wow. Uh, Ku, do you, do you recollect such events? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Hammer guy came. <laughs> Sounds like a no. Yeah. Picked up Theodore. He was like, yo, man, we yeah. gotta go. We completed our mission. She was like, all right, yeah. I'll see you later. Wait, and so it, the ha- Hammer guy did come? Or are you just yeah. saying stuff? No, no, Hammer guy came. Okay, Hammer was always I knew with, it. it was always with them, weren't they? It was like I know it was like I'm with Theodore, okay? That the little smile there. I, I don't know about that. Dude, I'm just eating like, candy, so that's why I'm okay. smiling. I like how we oh, mentioned sure, like sure. How, Great <laughs> cover. I like, I like how we mentioned these these characters. We just say their name like randomly Theodore. For some reason it sticks to my mind and I can't forget it. But if they say like <laughs> their actual name a hundred fucking times in this show, I'm still asking next week, I don't know this guy's name. Who is he? What is oh, he? Oh legitimately it's it's one of the worst named shows in terms of their like uh, samurai guy. I can't remember that guy's name for this life of me. I oh, want to call him hot, Sam. Hots. <laughs> like hot. Yeah, hot. Hots is a horrible name for that guy. Let's go with Sam. It also Sam. it's not. Look at this. Sam it is. Is his last name Arai? It doesn't help either that like they're like what the the name they're they're, they're saying isn't matching with the subtitles. Well, okay, you, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's that's bomb in Yoru, but I know. But it's still confusing. It's, it's still the only one help. character. I just find Bomb's care, name so weird. Terrible. It's, it's I mean, because it's, it's the Korean name. <laughs> bomb is? Yeah, Bomb is. I can only remember the names. Bomb is, is yeah. Korean for night, but they call him Yoru, which is the Japanese name for night. They should have just shown, like, you know, Yoru. And they should have just combined the two. Yoru Bomb. <laughs> mm. I don't know. <laughs> Bomber. Man, no. either Sasha needs to come up with more names, or I'm just going with whatever Rock calls them because the turtle names are a lot more easier to remember for some reason. Turtle, oh, names. I mean, turtle, turtle names, yeah, they are. instant coffee. <laughs> but seriously, I think Theodore has like a man crush on Sir, our boy Kuhn. I don't know anymore. Um, he's he's like the type of guy who was like, "Hey, man, I remember watching you take that shower. The soaps would trickle down your armpit." Like that's the uh, vibe I got from him. I don't know about yeah. that. Yeah, I, I, no. You don't, I don't know, guys. No, the way I'm, not, he confronted, I'm, not, I'm not feeling it. He was like, you, you like the princess? Wink, wink. I got something better for you. <laughs> <laughs> this is princess uh, he was like, it's called Princess Peach. <laughs> That's messed up, dude. We need to stop. We're going to get sued. Um, mm, yep. uh, so, yeah. All right, so that's like, so we have one more episode left, so I guess... Oh, are, we, are they going to finally ready, climb man. the tower next episode? <laughs> nope. 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 As you can tell, bo- uh, Bomb's going the wrong way. <laughs> yep. So that's not going to happen. For now. For now. For now, yeah. Uh, but I think what are some predictions thing... for Bond? How does he get out of this mess? I'm telling you, mine is the net dolphin orgy pushes the top. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't say he's just going to awaken like his inner powers and just float to the and top. Super Saiyan? And then... Probably yeah, more I logical, but I just think that's absolutely wrong. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Bomb's gonna die, and then Rachel's gonna become the main character. What? I, oh, nice! I will legit no. what? Show right wow! Now. I would love uh, that actually. 
and it's all about her faking being in a wheelchair for the rest of the show. <laughs> and that was the one moment she stood up, and then uh, they asked, like, oh, what happened? It's like, he just fell off. Or, like, the, the thing came after him, just knocked him off. I don't know what happened. And then the entire time, it's just her being just weak as fuck in a wheelchair, just faking people out, just stabbing them when they're not they're not seeing it. <laughs> I'd be down for that, the Rachel spin-off. <laughs> <laughs> the and then that up. last episode, the actual story, man. I'm predicting. <laughs> yes. I don't know. Am I? Bro, so like, oh, go ahead. No, no. So like, can can anyone see what's going on underwater, or is it just whatever? Like they're completely like sealed off in a sense. I think it's only the. Hmm. I think it's only the people doing the tests. So like Han Song and was there? Actually, they got interfered by. Um. Yeah, Theodore, right? Didn't Theodore cut off the view or something? Yeah, with that, that one like game control thing. Because everyone else is in the test, so like you can't see so, anything else. So, yeah, it sounds like they couldn't see in the episode. Yeah, the lighthouse. Cause, 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 yeah, because uh, yeah, because uh, not Theodore. The other the other Hoon family member shut off. He yep. he shot the connection. Yeah, what? that's that's Theodore. That, yeah, Theodore. That's Theodore. <laughs> <sighs> Come on, David. <laughs> So, I don't have any other features besides like I'm just gonna agree with Koo that like he's just gotta weaken his powers. You're agreeing to the wrong with the wrong person, man. All right. That's Akani, man. I get, I get that. I get those. I get them Rachel vibes. Okay. Ah, uh, looks like you're right, Brian. I didn't. How do you guys notice these little tills? It's amazing. Sasha, did you did you say a prediction? Yeah, I told you. Remember, net dolphin. <laughs> oh right, right. The orgy. Got it. They're saving him, man. Right. They are compassionate beings. <laughs> Alright, so yeah, yeah, so that's... I didn't, so... Catch, I didn't catch any of that, Brian. Jesus, that's insane. Alright, so yeah. that's going to be our prediction for next week's episode. So that's going to be the last episode of the season, and then next week we'll <laughs> wrap up our thoughts. Wait, so... wait, David. Yeah? One thing. Mm-hmm. Yes. Who was... I feel like someone called it and said she's faking. Even if they said it joking. It was cool. Oh, oh was cool. Yep, there we go. <laughs> right. Good job, nice. Cool. You, were you joking in a sense, or did you actually did you think so? No, because I, I was I was legit. I, I legit thought something was shady about her. I knew that something was going on. Um, I didn't think she was faking. I I was joking about the the faking part about being crippled, but I just didn't trust her as a character. Um, mm. But when she stood up and just pushed him off, I was like, "Oh, you bitch!" I knew I didn't like you for some reason. <laughs> oh yeah, and it got me all hyped up for today. So yeah, very nice coup. Well said, sir. Good predictions. You get you get the trophy today. Hell yeah! All right. Yeah, boy. All right. So yeah, that's that's our prediction for next week's episode. Might have some hairs over there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian's hairs, that is, because he's shaving for his posing of the abs model. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. That's we're having our thoughts on the season next week. So that'll be it for Tarf God. We're going to next to Gleipnir, because more should happen in this episode, too. Woo! So. Oh, M. Gleip. Dude, <laughs> was that not intense? All I got to say, our boy, Cloud Jr., a.k.a. All Might. That guy, man, AKA I like his, his logic. I know. So, man, he's, he's a good guy. But when he pulled out that rope, that caught me off guard. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> Are you, you just doing? Is, is that a threat? Oh yeah, I, I just uh... like in the episode. Every time you thought like, okay, you got like the uh, like the understanding of like where it was going. Then all of a sudden, it just put another spin on something, and then it put yep. a spin on that, and it just kind of kept going. And it, it was I don't know, it was it was intense. I was I yeah. I, I was actually so com- I'm like, why not ask? Like, did he? I'm um, I don't, I don't know, know if he asked her any questions of like why did you kill her or not. That is okay, and in, 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 in all Japanese shows, they never ask questions. Okay, they don't talk to each other. They basically it's just so act. dumb, dude. Yeah. Or dude, you know, he, like he could have made a wish it himself. He could have made a wish or anything. But no, he just straight up went to kill her. I mean, <laughs> <that's>, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you can't mess with that logic, man. <laughs> you, you took my friend's life. Because he was probably secretly crushing on her. Yeah, he was. Oh, yeah, Damn. Right. No, he was actually no, crushed. He was uh, in Konoka. crush with the girl that took that, over her yeah. body. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right, that's right. Yeah. So I'm confused on why the fuck he did that. Because he, he thought... Because, man... He thought that... So, she the girl's name is crushed on Honoka. He thought that the other girl, Aiko... He thought that Honoka killed Aiko. And 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. You see the biggest problem about this? Yeah. He thought yeah. Yeah. wrong. He thought wrong. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. life, isn't it, Brian? There's so many times we made decisions <laughs> yeah, where we thought. Yeah, that's why it's called ass fucking question. Yeah, sometimes dude, you just, dude, sometimes you just choke out the hard part. Oh, and I have to talk to Brian. You have to live with it, man. No, no, Brian. You know, <laughs> hindsight's twenty twenty, sir. You, you, you never know, okay? You, I don't know, man. This, this well, who's right here? You look terrible. Dude, one time, my friend said he did not take the last sandwich in the fridge, and I knew it was him, so I choked him to death. <laughs> it was not him. Uh... <laughs> right, and it's <laughs> what happens, guys. So that logic is just like you're living with one other person, and the sandwich is gone, and you're like, okay, it's got to be this guy. You kill the guy, but then you completely forget about that the friend has a dog, and you know the dog did it. <laughs> yeah. The worst part is, I think him growing out his hair has taken so much of his brain power that it's, <laughs> it's hard to make rational decisions when your hair looks like that. Dude, it, it, like, everybody has a normal hairstyle, and then they're just like, yeah, I can see that. This guy looking like a hedgehog, man. It's uh, a yikes. hedgehog that's never slept in his life. Yep. Yeah, the baggy mm-hmm. eyes, too. It's just, or bags under his eyes. Baggy eyes? How they even work? I don't know. Yeah, but, whatever. <laughs> Yeah, what an intense episode, honestly, because we got to learn all about them. The story makes a whole lot more sense, and I, I just feel bad. I feel bad that their whole friendship, and that one girl, it starts with her having no confidence. She was like, oh, nobody will mind if I'm gone. It's okay. <laughs> yeah, that was. So yeah. you got suicide, homicide, taking over someone else's body, and then friends going on murder spree because of going on the weirdest yeah, thing about all of this is that it started only like a few months before the show so like this this is like all like recent like all this shit happened so that's that's like the weirdest thing to me like this is such a short time span like they made it sound like it was like way back like years ago but this is only like three months early or something and uh hey, another thing i know oh, sorry go, go ahead sasha no no you're good no my you go for it because my i'm gonna completely change the whole thing so go for it oh uh, i was just gonna say like you know what it is though remember when you're younger and summer felt like it was three years long because you'd yep. only lived for 16 or 17 years. Now that you're double, triple that age, all of a sudden, <laughs> you know, summer feels like it's just like boom. Like, especially Brian. For him, wow. time just goes by so quickly. <laughs> but True. yeah, it, it was, uh, I'll be honest though, the person I felt the saddest about was when they had the flashback and they're like, remember when we went to cram school when Mrs. Johnson was still alive? <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> <"Dude>, bro. <laughs> That's fucked up. Like, you know what's crazy, dude? <laughs> like, when that flashback, this switch is such an ass. I was like, oh shit, the teacher's still alive. She didn't die of old age. And I was like, bro, calm. Jesus Christ, dude. What He's a horrible head. fisherman. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, the, the thing I was going to also say, too, is uh, the the relationship that I think Honoka and the alien had. It seems like, like Honoka was really like the only person that the alien has shown like, any kind of... Uh, um, I guess feelings for in a sense where he actually like uh, felt sad for like Hanukkah's story and everything else with the alien where like, all the other people's stories or like the coin abilities and stuff he's basically just you know smiles he's like oh yes yes just take your ability but it actually seemed like he was sad for Hanukkah Hanukkah? Hanukkah yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. But again yeah, it's just it's Honoka. really weird that like this was only months ago and like he just like everything happened so fast like in just a couple months like for that yeah that alien, like, he, he was he was sympathetic towards Honoka, and then, like, he just... And nobody else. And he just, like, nonchalant towards everyone else. Like... Yeah. Well, what I heard, from my understanding, is the alien's Jewish. <laughs> and be- because of her name, he was like, oh, I get it. I get it. This is a sign. So that's why he wanted to keep good ties with I don't know what you're trying to say. <laughs> first, you get Honoka, oh, bro. Now you got the Jews on us? <laughs> bro, we're fucked, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, man, I, I'm not saying anything bad. I'm just saying, Onoka, like, we celebrate her. For, okay? Oh, but, oh, oh but that's what you're trying yeah. to say? Okay. Yeah, come on, bro. No, I, I do nah. not know what you're meant, like, trying to reference at all, so. Well, that, that's too bad because you would have died. Okay. I would have put a rope around your neck, bro. Okay. <laughs> Thanks Nothing for answered everything. That... <laughs> yep. Put a rope around it. <laughs> At the beginning of this episode, though, when they first started the flashback with the the blonde hair guy, I was thinking, like, why are we seeing this guy's flashback? Like, I just don't care. But uh, I think it was, like, towards maybe the middle, even maybe even before then, I'm like, damn, this is this is crazy. 
Anna and oh, I, yeah. I definitely regretted like thinking that way from the like from the beginning of the episode. I don't know why you thought that, Strang, because like the last episode, they had the picture of all of them as friends. So uh, he's yeah, I mean, connected. Only, well, yeah, they only showed a picture of him. Then they showed you know like, where he has like the ability where it, ha- it looks like he had, like the spirit of Honoka is attached to him, and she's swinging a blade. And I mean, that's really all we knew. There, there was really nothing else with this guy. Yeah, but he was in the picture but, uh, of all of them. So yeah, I know, but yeah, so, well, even then, like I do agree, Strang. Like it's it it is kind of weird. But um, I, I got to say, at this point, though, we should kind of realize that this is the pacing that the show is going to go at. Just the fact that everything is going so fast, you would have to expect that they're just going to throw shit at you, like yeah. episode. So it came together really well, though. Yeah, it, it was like this was probably like one of my favorite, like more favorite episodes. Um, yeah. Do you I so agree with that. Um, for the final episode? Do you guys think it's going to be uh, focused on Sh- uh, Shuichi, or do you think it's going to be focused on? The other members that we've seen. Is it one more episode or is it two more? One more. Only one. I think it's one more. Ooh. I think it's going to be all their whole stories coming together. It can't have Shuichi's story without them. So <clears throat> this might be the moment where him and Claire finally collaborate in this. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so too. Yeah, I think something pretty intense or crazy is going to happen. I think they all going to die. Man. Uh, Brian, your thoughts? Is, no. is this making any more sense to you, Brian? Like, uh, are you. Uh, are you, like are you dropping the show, or, Brian? Or, yeah. Are you going to drop it right before the last episode? I'm just annoyed that they're not, like... I'm just annoyed by the episode, dude. Like, none of them decided to say hey, anything like, hey, she killed herself. At all. Well, well this dude yeah, is Brian, literally descending into madness. Everybody's just... Brian, like, here, like nothing happened. Here's the thing. I think if you go back and rewatch the episode... He makes it's an accident, right? He's just like, oh, you know, I squeezed a little bit too tight. Because if you remember clearly, he puts the rope and he goes, hey, let's hang out. And uh, oh he, he just kind of took it too far. He just ruined Wow. I thought you were trying to be serious. He just ruined it. <sighs> Dude, like, okay, the, the crazy part, like, everybody, like, knew that uh, that she killed herself. Nobody talked about it. But yet he was the only one who didn't think it or didn't this think so. Just thinking that Honoka killed Aiko and nobody said anything at all. They I suspect, like how... well, remember the, I forgot his name, let's just call him Gary. Gary was like, <laughs> hey man, my girlfriend's acting a little bit weird. But he's like, I think she's been transformed to take it over. I'd rather just let that lie because she might kill me next to take over <laughs> my body. So I think they were hinting at it because they were very complacent people. And I like that part because I would do the same thing. I'd be like, hey man, you know, she changed a little bit, but that's okay. But then this guy, he's got to go dig it for information and kill people. So, you know. And this dude, this freaking cloud-looking motherfucker, didn't give her any chance to speak at all. He was like, did you, is this where you buried her? He's like, yeah, she doesn't exist anymore. He's like, oh, you're dead. Over. Like, well, zero chance like, to talk at all. His mind was made up when he saw what he saw and what he found out. So, and I mean... You go back to that conversation he had with the other three, and he's like, dude, they knew. They knew, and they're fine with it. And so he's like, I can't let her memory fail like that. So he was just enraged. And, you know, it happens sometimes. Man. Sometimes <laughs> your friends kill you <laughs> because they have this deception. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Sasha, next time I come over, I'll just, no I'll just happen to have a rope <laughs> with me, all right? No, guys. Thanks, bro. We can't be friends no more. Oh, we're, we're, no, no, no. We'll, we'll, we'll all celebrate and bring ropes over. <laughs> Man, this is one messed up episode. This brought out the worst in all you guys. Oh, the, whole, okay. like the, the whole thing, the whole thing <laughs> with you, Brian. God damn, dude. Like the, the whole thing with her death, like it made sense where they were or for like Honoka, where she like was didn't want to say anything, just like act as her because she was saying like she just brought happiness to people. And she was the complete opposite that um where she didn't even feel like she existed. So she just thought like uh that her like her that her was her meaning. Would uh, would have more of an effect if she just took over as her friend and just acted as like it never happened. Yep. Yeah, I, I think with this episode, it's actually a lot deeper than what the episodes, like other episodes, and how we're explaining. Yeah. Yeah, because I want to say it's trying to dive more into the problems that the Japanese culture is having right now, where everyone just turns a blind eye. Uh, you know, if it's not causing you any harm, just don't worry about it. Uh, mm-hmm. We got people who try to do the right thing. And stand up for justice, but you know if you're not part of the crowd, right? The bullies will get uh, will get to you, and then that's what causes you to go into suicide. Uh, you got uh, Honoka, who is severely depressed, 
And when she lost her only friend that can kind of support her and keep her going, she figured, you know what, fuck it, my life's useless. Um, no one likes me anyways. I'll just uh, become this person and like have the the beacon of light, like continue on, right? And then you got like Elena and Shuichi, who, who, who they do have like a, a slight um, like sense of justice where they think they should do something. Well, not not really uh, uh, Elena, but Shuichi. But it was a little little too late, and then Elena just was like the Elena had that issue too, where she didn't want to do anything. She was just following the crowd. She didn't want any trouble. She would just let it be as it is, as long as it wasn't involving her. And then you got this guy, uh, like Emo Cloud. He he kind of lost his world, and he just couldn't deal with the fact that everything that he had that was the same is, is suddenly changing, and no one was willing to acknowledge it. So he just snapped. So. I feel like there's a lot of psychological factors being played into this that we're just not looking mm-hmm. into. But I think this episode it was really deep, and that's probably why there was all in for this loop. I was kind of hoping, yeah. I was hoping that I, I was wish wishing they would go more into depth, kind of like how like their whole kind of group split up, because it made it sound like they didn't actually meet up for a I long think, time. I think I do that next episode. Okay, okay. Because it cut off in I the think... flashback. I think it's going to be like any natural group where people move on to different things. Like they mentioned Shuichi was supposed to be top of his class. And then, you know, going back to Ku's point, you have the whole respect and reputation idea in Japan where your reputation is everything. And I think that's in, in certain cultures, really like how your family is perceived is it like it either makes you or breaks you. Whereas here in America where it's more individualistic, it's not as big of a factor. And so as soon as Hanoka found out or Honoka found out that my dad murdered somebody and was involved in some dirty business. Um, you know, that probably put shame upon her. And she's like, I have no one to go to. Her family didn't want her anymore. So it shows that she was rejected from all pretty much any connections besides her friends. And then if you go back to Aiko, Aiko was supposed to be like the beacon of light that she believed in because Aiko took all his bullying and took it on the chin. And she's like, I'm okay. It's no problem. But deep beneath it all, she was struggling massively through it and it couldn't take it anymore. And that's when she ended up taking her own life, which, you know, suicide is a huge deal. And I think it has one of the highest suicide rates amongst the world. So, and especially in developed countries. So to Ku's point, uh, a lot of serious themes were discussed and touched upon in this episode. And I think that's, like he said, that's a big problem we have in today's society. And I think that problem is honestly spreading more and more throughout developed countries because the more in touch we are with technology, it seems like the less we are in touch with ourselves. And that's a whole nother conversation, but yeah, a very deep episode. Um, all jokes aside, no hanging out. Guy. Yeah. That's good, man. I just want to mention that. Um, yeah. So we, so should we, should we still don't know how should we, she lost his memory. So that's why I started. I think like, that's like the part that's missing in the gap is mm-hmm. um, like whatever, like, and, and how, like, Elena. how, like, Elena and the other guy, how, like, she got her powers, and how Squishy got his powers. Whatever that gap yeah. is, like, they'll probably show next episode, and that's gonna be, like, what we're missing. Yeah, and Claire just found, uh, found out the the toy that is, uh, Shuichi. Toy, yep. plushie, yeah. whatever that yeah. is. So. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, it sounds like they're, they have, I mean, it, I know, obviously, like, the, the manga is still going. But it sounds like for like at least the arc that we're watching, it has a lot to go over, unless it's going to be one of those where the final episode airs and it announces a season two, which would be awesome. See, well, it's either that or original ending. So, oh god, yeah, god. I don't, I don't really see about that, David. Thanks for bringing that up. <laughs> yeah, because I don't think they can wrap this up uh, within the next episode, which is like what the only thing they can really do is, is the only thing they can really do is just kill Kaito, but then you still have the aliens to deal with, so. So it would basically just be sitting up for the next season or just, yeah. like how David said, anime ending if they don't feel like they're going to get a second season. Yeah, basically. It's, it's called Gang. Akami got killed. So. Well, as long that. as it's done tastefully, I think it's acceptable. Like, if they dig deeper into their breakup and their psychology and how everything came to be, and then they end it with it's probably going to be a major death or a major revelation, and that's where they end it, I would be okay with that. Because I would say, alright, they're lining it up for season two, and we'll get to dive deeper into it. If it's some like half-assed attempt to wrap things up and it just feels like all of a sudden you get those guys from the forest back and like, hey, we're here to help you out. Then I'm like, oh, I'm out. So I think this ending is going to impact next season quite a bit. I'm just hoping most of it's going to be canon. And if the only part has to be filler, just like the ending. 
or like just like the short ending or something. But if they show a filler in the last episode, I might flip, dude. I don't think they're gonna show a filler. Like the only no. part I would believe in would be like how David was saying, like anime original. Well, that's what he was talking about. If like they have that's basically yeah. filler. Oh, because it's not okay. canon. I suppose. Yeah. The only. Yeah, I, I don't think they're gonna go that route based on right. how the show's progressed so far. So yeah. I think the only like logical thing to do at this point would just be to end the season with a revelation as to tying all the stories together, and then maybe uh, tying in the fact that Claire and Shuji can finally uh, metamorphosize together to get their true form. But mm-hmm. I don't think anything other than a revelation is going to occur because th- there's no way you can do that in, like twenty twenty five minutes. So okay. through that, a lot to unpack. But oh boy, both this and Tog. You got me fog. <laughs> Cannot wait. All right, next next yep. week's episode. Yep. So that's gonna be it for Gleipnir. Yeah. So tune in next week where we finish up these two shows and then give our thoughts for the season. Um, we're gonna move on next to Hamifura for me and Strand. This, this this was the last episode, so we'll talk about the last episode and then like just give our thoughts for the season in general. So. Oh man. <laughs> what do you think that last episode, Strand? This this has this felt like one of the weakest ending episodes ever. You don't like how she just solved the problem by talking with him. It was oh my god. I mean, it was I mean it was, I think it was to be expected. I didn't really expect too much dark, any kind of like dark twist ending. Even though that kind of the backstory of that redheaded guy was kind of uh, a was kind of messed up. Uh, you were pretty messed up, yeah. Especially for like this type of thing, but. I I don't know. It was like half the episode again was just going through the whole where it's just like oh like I had like feelings for Katarina. It's just like and then Katarina is just oblivious to everything. And then oh, you get to like the half, point. Yeah. Yeah. Then you get to the point at the end where she's like still worried about death flags, and it's just like you're fine. <laughs> like it, like nothing has happened that that should even have you believe that it's leading down that route. I, if I anything, mean, I'm more. Go ahead. I was gonna say, like, I want to believe the Maria route just because, like, because the whole thing was centered around like who is Maria gonna pick, and she, you know, she ends up picking Katarina. So I want to believe it, even though it's 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 like open ended basically because it's second season. So yeah, no, I'm right? honestly okay with the the, the gray hair guy. He's my favorite. <laughs> oh yeah. I was, the only good thing is that like now that they're past like all the in game stuff, now she has no she has, she has no excuse. But then again, yeah. it's just gonna be like she's just gonna be oblivious. So then she's still she's gonna have no excuse now for like not taking anything taking any of the hints because there's no in game event to to fall back on. But, it, but it's like how how far how long can you go just being oblivious about the whole thing? And like how it's called uh, just being like, an anime uh, character, anime uh, protagonist. Yeah, I, I, I suppose, but it's just like. I, you, you cleared the death flags, which I assume, well, I, I suppose could still happen later on. Um, but it just seems like at this point, it's not going to happen. They're all friends. She got the friendship ending, for now, at least. Yeah. So nobody hates each other. Well, it, like, yeah. Um, um, like, yeah, so it's, it's past the game, so. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm actually more excited for the second season. Because cause I'm, I'm just going to, in my mind, I just assume, like, okay, she can't have any of these kind of stupid thoughts anymore about basically death flags and just you know coming to a realization that she should be safe or well fine. i mean the um, way like when she the way she handled maria's confession when she asked who do you like and maria said like you she's like no that's not what i mean and when you're like no that's exactly what she means yeah i don't have a pain law but no so i can, um, i can see being like that the whole i can see either being filler again or it could just be that the whole next season like like oh, God, asking yeah. who do you like, and they say I like you, and she's like, no, not like that. I hope not. So yeah, we'll but see. I mean, if anything, gray hair guy is my favorite, and also Mary. Those are my t- top two tier choices. <laughs> if if really? if this even like ends Mary, with anybody, I, mean, I feel like Mary didn't do much. Uh, oh, I mean, it's just I, I assume she's gonna she's gonna play more of a part next uh, next season, mainly because I mean she was gone half this season because they were you know she, they showed. <laughs> Uh, they showed you know Katarina uh, growing up before she came into the picture, and then by the time she actually was you know grown up, or at least in high school, or the school, that that's when she first you know uh, met Mary. So it was like halfway through the show already, and then of course I think the last talk, couple of episodes. Maria, Maria, sorry. God, I thought and then she went Mary. missing. Not, if you say Maria, then I agree with you. I thought you meant Mary, like the other friend. Oh no, God. nope. My bad. No, it, it's yeah. So those would be my like my two. 
top two choices, but uh, it, it's more of like I, I'm going to still hold faith that this that the second season can hold strong, like the first half of this of this show because it was so good, and I was so I was so much hoping that they were going to show more of uh, of the like the real life like the real life stuff that was happening. Cause I thought that was that like that, was, that just seemed like it was so cool, but they every time they kind of showed a, like a little bit of it they just kind of would go away from it with not really explaining like how and why that was happening. It was just kind of happening. Um, for me, it's just going to depend if it's going to be like canon or not. Like, cause I don't know like how, how much of, I'm just assuming fil- that the filler stuff wasn't canon. If that stuff was like, was actually in like the light novel, then I don't know how they're going to do like That's the second the season. Like, like it's just going to be more random slice of life stuff. So yeah. Yeah. I'm going to still, We'll think see. that the second season would be more canon, but I have no idea what they would talk about besides what you said, where it's just going to be more stupidity. Like, oh, <laughs> it's going around even, the circle. Oh, even if she doesn't God. actually pick someone, at least if it's, if it's comedy and not just people talking about their, how much they like Katarina, then I'll be fine. Yeah. I don't need to yeah, hear just... it, them confessing their feelings again yeah. for the fifth Keep time. It... Yeah, Keep it out, unless it's like the last episode and it's basically coming to like the final pick <laughs> and then like just keep it for that episode and then just don't mention it anymore in the show it was too many times all right so Ugh. yeah so that was i guess the last episode and just our thoughts on what were you think for season two just just your thoughts overall like yeah how, i think i kind of gave it how do you view the show yeah i think i well I, I gave it a seven um but for me like a seven is more of like it like it is like it is like it was it was what it was supposed to be like i mean i knew it was gonna be like a rom-com with just the reverse harm so i wasn't ex- i didn't have too many high expectations um it's like a show that i mean it was good to watch to try but i would never watch it again <laughs> the beginning of the show the beginning of the show started off so strong uh for all for i mean a good chunk of it i mean i remember we were trying to uh uh talk Ku into watching this show but then the second half we're like Oh God, I got nothing for you. But it was, and then it was also like because they had like really interesting like elements they were using, like I like I mentioned where she was having like those like uh, memories or flash like flashbacks or just like visions uh, from her real life friend. That was you know like we still don't know why she, you know she was Season like two. her vision for coming through. Yeah, so I'm hoping they go over this because those are the parts that I thought were so like I thought they were so good and so I don't know it was and different from a lot of the other isekais at least of the ones I've watched. Um, I've definitely slowed down on Isekai's because I'm finding out more and more trash. <laughs> um, but so I don't know. So those are the elements I'm really hoping um, they kind of hit. They kind of go back to and hit on for the second season. But, um, yeah. I'll, just most, I'll just mostly agree with you, with Trin. I'll probably like it's like a low seven for me, just because like I I, had, I didn't have much expectations for the show, and the ending certainly did was it did hit was higher than I expected, but like. Just falls in the tropes of like the, not, I guess not even the tropes. It just felt like the I think it's mainly the pacing issues really, that was the main issue, the main problems. Like, if it wasn't for that, actually it would have been like a decent like like romance show. But like the pacing yeah. and like pacing and fillers just really ruined it. Or I mean, I don't know ruined, but like just made it less exciting. So yeah, and Agreed. also like there's this. People just talk about how like this like the first um like Isekai like ultimate game, but there's plenty of them. Like there's lots of manga and light novels of like of where like a female main character gets reincarnated into the vill- either uh, ultimate protagonist character, but that's really cliche. So then the next cliche would be the the, the villainess. So it's like yeah. the, the second most cliche like part of like of an Isekai like ultimate setting is being the villainess. That's another thing I thought actually was new. I never really watched something where you know, like the main the it's MC just like was the most, like, villain. The most, I guess, the most pop- This is, I guess, the most popular like ultimate isekai. But there are plenty okay. of like, plenty of like manga, especially where, like, yeah, because it's like it just sets up the drama. I guess it sets up the drama, where like they have to, they have all these things against them. Even though it's kind of it's kind of which weird because like, it's like because it's the ultimate ones. There's a lot of drama of them being main character, whereas, like, the the guy, Isekai, is always them having power fantasies. So. Well, I, I guess, like, um, for the show, I mean, definitely watching it this season was a, a show I would have 
definitely watched mainly because there was so little to watch this oh, season. Yeah. So so it, it was uh for like for that it definitely benefited. But if it was like a season where like next season where I mean we're I mean we're talking like what well, we're possibly watching like between what eight ten shows. There's just so many shows. I mean, it was nice to have also like a rom com, rom com isekai. I mean, I still like I, I trash on a lot of isekais, but I still I still enjoy the like the, like main yeah. ones that I actually watch and stick with. So wow. you gotta have one for a season to still least throw in there to have fun with. Well, I was gonna say there's no it's not isek next season not isekai, but there's another reincarnated show just for you, Shred. Yeah. Sword Art's close enough, man. And Digimon, that's right. isekai too. We already I, I, talked about this. Yes, Digimon is an isekai. I don't, I don't count yeah. Sword Art isekai because that's MMO. They can always jump in and out of the MMO. Yep. Whereas isekai, right. you, you don't jump in and out of isekai whenever you want. That is true. All right, man. Digimon. <laughs> Digimon, yes. Digimon is the isekai. The ultimate isekai. Yeah. Anyway, those are my thoughts. Yeah. So we'll just, leave it, you? We'll just leave it for there. So overall, I guess like good start, but just couldn't hang, hang in there until the end. 7 out of 10. Average. C. Uh, just a little 7. Like maybe a 6 for me. So, that'd be yeah, it for... Yeah. That'd be it for Hamifura. Um, we're gonna move on next to uh, Kaguya-sama, which was another another serious episode. We have a lot of serious episodes this week. Yeah, dude. Just out of getting, left... Getting it hard with Ishigami right here. I don't know where to begin for this, but at the end of the episode, dude, my heart felt so warm. And... Dude, like, uh, so good that uh that classroom scene like it wasn't like like after Ishigami was beating up the other guy and like the cla- all the classmates start like like gossiping around him. I mean, I was so uncomfortable to watch like, seeing Ishigami like getting dragged down like that. Yeah, it's just I don't know why, but I mean I know they're trying to make it as realistic as possible, I guess. But it just sucks so bad that no one's willing to hear him out, and this man was just trying to do the right thing right he had a strong sense of justice but he just didn't do it in an intelligent manner he just let his emotions uh, i mean take he was in he was in middle school so like uh i mean yeah you're right i get it like but... all these kids were in middle school too so like but even then i felt <sighs> the i was hoping for at least one person to stick out for him you know but i guess with with his background he was kind of a loner. No one really liked him. He was like, he was or a, no one really talked to him. Like he was like a loner, and like everyone, and like I mean, everyone walked in on the classroom. So like, I guess like yeah, you wish there was someone who would have asked for his side of the story, but yeah, you have to remember, no one really knows of him or yeah. is really close to him. So I, I guess it's, it's like the, it's like the combination of like like these are middle school kids, so of course they're immature, and it's also also Japan. They're more likely to like one when they. Like when everyone thinks about something, you know, you want you don't want to speak up against them. So yeah, so that really sucked. But I kind of liked it because it set you up, like it, it brought you down. And then with the way that the episode played out, it brought you to a higher playing field where you were just overwhelmed with like the good feelings. Like there is, like humanity is worth saving in a sense. Oh, right? um, let's say because. Uh... That last um, part where Ishigami, where like the whole time when he couldn't see people's faces, and then he opens his eyes and he actually can finally see like, their faces and recognize them. A lot, like, a lot of yeah. people on Reddit compare that to um, a silent voice. The part where like the, where the main character he had the X's over people's fa- faces, and then like at the end, like the X's, X's just dropped out and they're normal. So oh, a lot I've of people. Seen that. Oh, okay. Well, a lot of people compare that to a silent voice, and but I think this was like a better use because like. Because like you thought, I don't know, like because it was such a nice like uh, stylistic choice for just to make everyone like make everyone faceless and just make everyone like on like un like not unrememberable and then finally like finally like showing like to the audience like how he actually sees them who they are. Yeah, and it was just the way that the theme is set for the show. You wouldn't expect them to throw out anything with this much depth to it. Uh, so I thought it was a nice touch. I mean, I just thought that the animators were just lazy or something. That's that what, these uh, yeah. guys were important, so they just didn't want to draw on their faces, which is why I was kind of confused. Like, why is it that uh, he could see like that one blonde chick, and I don't really remember who she is? So I thought that maybe they had like a special tie together, but I, I guess they do know of each other. But it wasn't as deep as I thought it would be. Mm-hmm. And it, the fact that they just opened up saying, "Hey, you know, there are good people in this world," and you know, he blinks, and then he can finally see their face now. I thought well, that was a real I think touch. that's an important message, because it was like, in a lot of the, 
like a lot like the, the sh and whenever they deal with themes like loneliness, it's or, or like or like you know especially otaku's or nerds who like get either bullied or they get like outcasted, like they always like see everyone as, as like normies as someone like they can't relate to, and like this is this is showing the message of like like um where like. He, uh, Ish where Ishigami, he felt so cut off from everyone, but he realized that, like, there are good people, and that's why, like, so even though he, like, he felt cut off with them, he was never, like, he was never really, like, alone. There's always people with there willing to support him, so I think that, that's a nice message to, like, a lot of people, a lot of, especially lonely people who feel that way. Oh, uh, I wonder if that would, because I, I would want to say, right, what is the, like, who is the main audience for this series? I wonder if they were specifically towards them, or was it just like, uh, like an announcement that they wanted to show. I, th I mean, I think it's just a general like otaku, a general otaku audience, especially for rom com. But like, because um, you know, a lot of times like people who like people who don't have friends or who feel like left out of society, they like a lot of times this is an escape for them to like. To see like people living normal lives, but I think it's yeah. So, so there's always I think there's a good chance a, a sizable amount of the audience is like that lonely outcast, and I think this was a nice message to show them. So that brings up my point too. Do you think this is necessary, or do you think they're trying to like uh, do too much? Like no, I, I guess I, the term is like be too woke. No, I think it was a good storytelling for the character, and I think it was also a good message to. to like in general, but I mean the main focus was the storytelling and giving character development to Shikami. And just like it also had the nice effect of like having the nice message to people who feel this way. Yeah, true. And then also and then want, bitch. Uh, <laughs> Well, I just wanna to mention too, like how I like how too how um they're willing to like it's the what they're making Ishigami, they're willing to make Ishigami like like uh walk away, like cut off because like, he felt so much baggage towards that one girl and they're I like how the story made him like cut her off and like move on, because in a lot of like other like like rom com shows, like they would have like they would have like those two make up or whatever or like or like have like if he was the main character like have her join part of the harem or something, something like that. Whereas here it's like it's actually a good message to show like yeah you have baggage with one person but just cut them off and you feel so much better. Like I think that's a good mess. That was a good like message too. Yeah, and then the closure that they gave Ishigami was, was like perfect, right? Uh, the guy that was uh, manipulating the girl and Ishigami, like the dude cracked and he just left. Um, the girl, she she wasn't really she was dumped right away, so she wasn't abused or manipulated or hurt in any way. So he he got what he was going for, right? He wanted to protect that smile, protect that innocence. Uh, however, he didn't end up with the girl, but I think that's fine. That's I don't think he ever true. wanted to end up with the girl. I think like. It's just like being like a teenager, you know, like you, like, and you see, you see, like, you see, like, like shady shit like that going on, like, like, I don't blame him for what he did because like he, he, he definitely felt like he couldn't just like sit there and like let let it happen well on like he knew what was going on, so. Yeah, but being able to move on, like, like I know he didn't really want to go after it, but I guess since it was the first uh, friend that he had, he must have felt some attachment towards her. Like, yeah. it, it kind of sucks that they didn't get together, but I felt like this was the better approach, just to see that, uh, you know, as as a as a person, you know, he did the right thing and it paid off, yeah. right? Otherwise, if you would never get that 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 payoff, um, like who knows? Maybe after the uh, the the sports festival. Maybe he just goes back to the way he was because he's like, "What's the point? I lost the race. Like, I don't know what happened to that yeah. girl." I think um, I think he still would have been fine because, like, because um, I think he still would have like got the encouragement from like the the cheer, the cheer, the, the cheer squad, the O and Don, and like. Uh, yeah, but he he didn't really like flip switch until he was about to go, and then the president uh yeah. like gave his red hairband. And then he turned over, saw her, and then he just flipped, saying, "Like you know, just go to hell." You know, like he just <laughs> yeah. like closed her off. So uh, yeah, like uh, everything just just came together perfectly. I think for that. I just want to give a shout out to Shirogane, man. He's the man, just like doing everything for all the characters in the show. 
a true people's person, I guess you can like, say. We, we, give him, we give him shit for like having to get coached constantly by Shika, but in the end, though, he's like he's such a good, good like he shows why that um I guess why he deserves to be student president, just because like he actually looks out for people and he does the right thing. And I like because like every again like other like rom com shows where, like the main character is always like weak and useless. Like Shogami just comes in, just like he's he's being such a bro to Ishigami and like. Helping him out like that, and clearing his name as student council. Fair. He came out of nowhere. So, like, how did he learn about it? Like, what was his connection to the whole incident, or to? I think it's like it's maybe like Chika and, and Kaguya who like probably helped. Yeah, like, but how did they learn about it? So it's kind of like you close one story, but you open up another. Like uh, Kaguya kind of was like saying how like I mean because um because her her assistant like, Haya Saka she was like. Question: Kaya, did you know any? What did you do? Did you do anything about this? And Kaya's like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, you know, slyingly. So you, you knew she like helped out, and yeah. Yeah, but again, it just opens up like another mystery. Like, how did they know, right? Um, but there's only one more episode left, so I don't think they're gonna dive deeper into it. I don't think I, gotta, I don't think I go much in that. I think it's just like it's just probably like those three like probably did a bunch of investigations and like. They probably, um, like, they probably, like, like intimidated like, their friends or whatever, or, like, and probably, like, like caught on events, too, or something. I don't know. Yeah. But, but I just, uh, just want to give a shout-out to Shiragane, man. Like, we need, like, good, like, main characters like him that are, like, willing to, like, be a strong, like, strong leader. We don't get that much in anime, especially rom-coms. They're always, like, the self-insert main characters who are just useless because they're trying to relate to the audience. Yeah, true. So then what do you think is going to happen to the next episode? I don't know, because, like, hmm. I don't see any romance happening between Shogai and Kaguya, which is, again, the whole point of this show. So... I mean, I think there might be a thing, just because, like, I think Shogai's dad somewhat set him up. <laughs> in a way. We'll see. I don't know. Just... Maybe it could be, this could be the show that actually subverts expectations and actually have the characters dating and have the show going on, but I don't know. We'll see. We haven't seen any hints of I mean, I get yeah, the dad and all, but I don't know. We'll I mean, they are being more in tune with their feelings with each other. Like, he's, he's, like, both characters are slowly starting to crack, right? And then with the setup with uh, Shirogane's dad, uh, she might crack more under the pressure that he knows of her feelings towards Shirogane. So she might think that he's going to go tell Shirogane, like, when they get back home, like, hey, you know, that, that girl, she really likes you, blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, like, she'll have these crazy thoughts in her head. And then it might cause her to just come out and blurt out her feelings. Mm-hmm. Um, but I want to say with this next episode, it's probably going to be the end of the sports festival. And then there's going to come to an end. And once they do the closing ceremony or they clean up, that's probably where something big is going to happen, I'm going to assume. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to think about the timeline because I think – because. Because um, because they had their election at the end. I think it was like the end of their second year. So I think that I think they're in the third year now. So I don't know like if they're just gonna transition to the summer then or what. If it's gonna be like some sort of summer setting, I don't know. We'll see. I hope it's a strong ending though. Because last season we had like the fireworks and like and Shogane like taking Kaga to the fireworks. That was a good ending. So hopefully, we'll have a strong ending. Even though this season we had episode three that baited us. You think that it was the end, so. Or it could just be all about Chica. Like I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay. You know. I just, I just, I hope for a strong end, for the show, for the season at least. Yeah. Because it, it, it kind of it's it's like setting at, at least I feel like it's setting like higher expectations for this ending. So, I'm hoping it's good. Do you think there's gonna be season three? I hope so. I'm pretty sure it's really popular. It's super popular in China. Like I'm pretty sure it got streamed like over 100 million times in China. Oh, that's weird. But I mean, I guess if China likes it, it must be good, right? <laughs> well, it makes a shit lot of money if China likes it. So, right, right. But uh, and it's pop- I mean, it's popular in Japan too, so I can't see why not it won't get season three. Because like that's like the main one. Of the... Yeah, it's like it's like really popular. So I, and then I'm pretty sure it's still ongoing. So I don't see how it wouldn't get season three. I don't know, man. I don't even know how these things get greenlit. Like what. What's it's, the expectations? What's the standard? It's very because, yeah. Oh. It's it's changing because of like how important streaming's becoming. So we'll see. But yeah, I suppose. But I think uh, I think yeah. it's popular enough for season three. All right. 
So that's gonna be it for Kaya Summer, and then we'll conclude with next week for the season, and then give our thoughts in general. Uh, we're gonna move on next to Sing Yesterday for me. So I need to oh, go. I need, I need to. Oh, dude, what happened to eight episodes? Okay, so I need. I need. To, so apparently we all got baited. Or I got baited, and I I baited Ku in the process. So I'm sorry, Ku. I mean, I, I got baited. And I wasn't even watching the show. So apparently, like, so people people on Reddit kept saying it was 18 episodes, and even I think even my email list listed as 18 episodes. That trash website. That's all David's opinion even better God, or in so, higher regards stuff there. So because well, um. I think like I think half of the episodes had like an extra at the end, or because like, there's like a bunch of extras that was not part of the episodes. There's like six of them. Apparently, those six extras were mistakenly counted as an episode. So I think that's why everyone thought it was eighteen instead of the what regular twelve. Extra? What extra are you talking about? There's like apparently some ex- I think it's some extra web stuff or something like, like. Like episode it's probably extras. like some extra, like, like it's probably it's like two minute extra like little clip things some, or something. Kind of like how like mangas that. have like the extra stuff at the end of the volumes, like I think it's like stuff like that in anime form. So apparently there's like there's six of them, and that's why everyone thought there was eighteen. So someone said that on Reddit, and then someone also posted that on my anime list. So everyone thought it was eighteen. So we all got baited into thinking we had like eighteen episodes. Bro, I was watching it. I was like, "Oh shit, this is going at a really fast pace." And then all of a sudden, they show the end credits, and it's like, "Wait, that's it?" And it's like, "What the fuck just happened?" <laughs> you know, like, "What the hell, dude?" Oh my god. But okay, so other than that, God, the ending, <laughs> it was it was rushed. It was like, hella rush, yeah. That's, Super rush. I don't even understand where it's going. And then the the end scene uh, with uh, with Rogan in his apartment and he having his friends over, and then Shinako shows up out of the blue. Like, I don't even know what's going on. Like, what kind I'm, of writing is this? I'm okay for that part. Like, I really don't want Ro and Shinako to get together. I I really I, I don't like Ro. I'm like full on the, on the hate train of him now. Like with everyone else. Like I really don't. I really hate Ro. He just I think he ruined the show. Because it seems to be the moral of the story is if you're the younger person and you're aggressively trying to chase after an older person, you're going to get them. Because that's basically how this worked out. With as Hawk. long as you weren't childhood friends. Right. So it's like... Oh. I mean, I, I still like the ending though just because of the payoff of Haru at the end. Like, the the facial expression that she showed towards the end when Riku just confessed to her and said that, uh, that, she, that he loved her. Like, just, just innocent, just like lighting up. And like that was that was a really good feels feels good moment, right? So if you were on Team Haru, like congrats, I mean, you finally got what you wanted for. I mean, but this, this is what this is what we were like like saying this whole time. Like we thought this would happen, but we didn't think like it'd be this rush. So like yeah, like like we so, we, I mean, we thought that like they're gonna show like the relationship and then break up with Shinako, but like nothing even happened in the relationship. Like, they didn't do anything. The worst, like that was the worst relationship ever. So so from from beginning to end, right? They they start off with the fact where uh, Ro found Shinako and Riko together. Uh, Ro was trying to act like a man, was like, no, don't talk to me. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to her. Like and then bitch. he runs away. And he runs away like a little bitch, right? Shinako chases after him for some reason, and she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Like, what are you apologizing for? Like, what is this shit? And then all of a sudden, it cuts forward because I think there was a time lapse. Yeah, because they? they were in winter because they're all wearing like their coats, and then it cuts forward to spring. Where in um, bro gradu- graduates from high school. Yeah, and then it's like, okay, so there's another time lapse, and then I guess they were still dating, but all of a sudden on this last date that they're on, uh, he realizes that he'll, uh, he was in love with Haru, and like this wasn't going to work. This wasn't like love, it was just uh, familiarity okay. and just being comfortable. So that part, I'll, I'll, I'll give him the benefit of the doubt where it's like, it wasn't out of the blue on that spring day there was that i think it was like that one day in winter when he saw like the album with haru on it i think i think he was ever since that day in the winter he was thinking about it so i think he was probably like thinking about all his time during that time lapse so it probably i don't think it was that just that one day out of blue in spring but i do think it was still like really weird how he came to that conclusion yeah but again like I didn't think that it was going to be the. I don't. I didn't think this was the last episode until the very end. So, I, I thought that they were building up nicely. And then uh, the thing that threw me off was the fact that they went to the bench, 
Riku and uh, Shinako had that talk and decided to just be friends. And then all of a sudden, they went to separate ways and then he chased out the Haru. And this was all done in one episode. Like, I, like it's, it's, I guess the ending is nice if you're a friend of, if you're a fan of the Haru train, right? I, mean, I was a fan, but, but I still like, didn't like the ending because of how rushed it was. Yeah. Like, dude, I'm just so unsatisfied right now. And like, there's so much more that needs answers. And like, I don't really like, like, Shinako's explanation of how, like, she wasn't paying attention to Ro. Like, I, like, I don't like. T- I don't take that as her like being interested in Ro. But I don't see why that has to like affect her relationship with Rikuo. Like, it's so weird to me. Like, I think she's just using it again as an excuse to to not like like not deal with her problems of not being over the brother's death. Like, I I don't know. Like, Shaka has such serious problems. Like, she's. I think she's just afraid of like of um just just opening up and that's that basically just like that's the that's the real reason why like all the relationships like she says she's sorry but she's not sorry because she caused all the relationships to crumble because she couldn't like she couldn't move forward. Yeah, so uh I wonder if this is like a, a form of symbolism, right? Um uh, you know how in the very beginning uh Riku didn't get his shit together it was kind of lost, just kind of dragging around, uh, trying to stick to what was comfortable with him, like what made him feel uh, safe in a sense. So uh, that's why he got that job at the convenience store. He didn't really aim high. And he got like Shinako over here, who's like found a job right after college. She's doing really well for herself, independent woman. And then at the end of the series, it kind of got flipped over, right? Uh, Rikul is now a uh, like employed guy. He's doing well. He's uh, progressing with his career. Uh, he's willing to change and take a chance while shinako you kind of see her start to like uh like progress backwards and become more more scared more progressive and just doesn't want to take any chances so she's afraid of letting go of what she already has that's why she still wants to be friends with riku and and ro and then yeah it's just i just don't know what's what's going on the the way that they develop her character at first made me feel like she was going to grow as a person but it made me feel like she was just going backwards and she's just still stuck in her little bubble that she never actually got out of yeah so uh, i'll probably for more development for her but I'll, i'm really disappointed with the way they developed shinako yeah same like i think they did that just so they could like pair up Yuko with haru but that was really it it basically cost like her character like just to get that ending like Besides, like the rushed ending, it it just cost the character, and like I, I don't like the way that was handled. Like, because, yeah, it feels like a cop out, honestly. If, at the very least, like you could have like, I don't know, like she couldn't even have to date Rico. She could have just still at least like, ma- like made like moved on her past and just let everything go, and like she, she could I don't know, she could still like t- not even like she could still be friends with Rico too and just say like. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like, like I don't want to date you, but like, I'm ready to move on. Whatever. I don't know. Like, it's just very weird. Like, like. Yeah, and then, uh, you like you know how early in the first six episodes too, they're showing like the background stories of all the characters, and then they had two additional like side characters popped up, right? Like Haru's old uh, school buddy. You got uh, Riku's ex. I thought that they were going to make a comeback and oh, trying yeah. to like bring everything together um but yeah it's just i think the series was being developed at an extremely good pace and then this happened <laughs> and it just completely well i mean i, I want to say completely but it, it ruined the experience for me in a sense basically yeah i agree <laughs> yeah thanks sasha yeah uh, so. but yeah so oh i don't know like like I was, I was excited, but now that I think about it, it's like, man, like I don't know how to feel about this. I, I feel just, like I got, I got, I just, I feel, I, just, I feel so disappointed, you know, because like this is not how I like. If I wanted the hard ending, this is not how I wanted to be. Like, yeah, like I legit thought that when she punched him, right, and then she was gonna say like, no, I'm like I'm not gonna be a rebound girl, you know. But she just, she just gave him like, a, like an out. He and then she just took it. She didn't like 
like I was expecting her to just deny him and then just walk back home. And then all of a sudden, like he's got to work for it now, right? Because you know this is a girl that went after you, and you, you like she's a rebound chick, but she deserves more than that. So like, what makes you think you have the right to come over and beg for her to come back? Because he's the main character in an anime. No, Haru's the main character. Okay. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it's like I said, it's just there was just so many things wrong with this episode. It just kind of turned the whole series upside down. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt I kind of felt that way towards the end. Like I felt like it was going more downhill, but and then it just really ruined, just like yeah, really ruined it. Ah, uh, yeah. So all right, well, enough of my rant. Um, no, no, that's so good. I, I I like. I I wanted to hear your thoughts on, the, and this is like the last episode too, so we have to like, it's nice to like give a conclusion to this series. Yeah, so I guess you can go first. Wow. What what did you think, David? Of like the show in general, or like? Yeah. What what is your thoughts on this? I I really like the beginning. Like I really like the pace of what's going. I really like how the characters were developing, and I thought it was a nice like grounded like take on a romantic comedy. And like, and I totally forgot about the two side characters you mentioned, but like, they were like easily my favorite part of the series when it showed like just they just came in and like they did what they needed to do and they grew as a character and then they left and that was a really nice like way to show their story. So I really appreciate that. I I kind of thought actually I actually didn't expect the horror thing happen. I still kind of thought that like, maybe it would have been. Like Riku and Shinako, and then like Ro and Taru, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not like I'm not sad that like that we had a Haru ending, but like I just don't like how we got there. I still hate Ro. Like oh my god, he was like, usually the worst part of this, this show, and I'm just more disappointed in Shinako. Like kind of like how like like I was talking about Kaguya Sama, like sending a message to the audience. I think this was like, not a good message to send. Just like just this person just stuck with like stuck with the problems like, we didn't like solve anything like we just she's just constantly like having baggage of like her past so and also and any again and, and rico too having like he didn't like have to work for anything he just got like the rebound so yeah just overall like just disappointing end to like a, a show that had a good start so out of, out of ten, what what are you giving it, sir? Ah, uh, probably. I'll, probably I'll, I'll give it a six. Sure, let's go with that. Oh, whoa, whoa! I didn't think it would be that bad, but uh, okay. Jeez, damn. Okay, like high six, low sevens. There's no point fives, so I can't do that. But yes, you can. It's your grading system. You can do seven point nine for all I care. Uh, <laughs> probably, I'll probably give it a little seven. Yeah. Right. Well, I guess. Uh, but yeah, I would like if it was if you take out the last episode, I would have given this series like an eight point five or nine out of ten, just because the the setup from the from the beginning to episode eleven was done really well. It it took you on a roller coaster. Uh, it, it brought up all these different aspects about life because I don't really I wouldn't really consider this a, a rom com. I would just consider it like a drama. I guess drama. Concept. I should say drama. Right. Yeah, it's more a drama. Yeah. Because this is more towards like a mature audience, yeah. Uh, I, I want to say, and then it, it touched base with so many different things that kind of hit home as well. So maybe that's why I'm giving it such a higher rating. But uh, yeah, like from the very beginning, they introduce each character, right? You got Ro, Shinako, uh, Riku, and Haru. Okay, and after that, they introduce two more characters to kind of help build on like Haru and Riku's character development. Like nothing really extra done with Shinako or Ro. So I thought that you know like they were going to end up together, right? Because they got more airtime. But then after episode six, uh, you start to see this like slow downtrend where uh, a lot of like uh, fan favorite moments weren't happening, right? Uh, like Shinako was teasing Riku. Uh, you got Ro acting like a little bitch the whole time. Um, just just tons of things that made you as a as a viewer like very displeased with how the show was progressing. And then towards the end, like it was getting better. Uh, you thought that they're all the characters were like developing more and more becoming more mature and then all of a sudden this very last episode i made it made the series go down to like a six or seven like you mentioned um just the fact that i feel like i got cheated everything was super rushed and then 
there's no positive um, like lesson here to to be to be said from this, and it just feels like things should have gone a totally different way. It feels like everyone uh, like there was no payout other than for Haru. But even then, like the 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 way that the the story ended for the other characters too, it just just it leaves a really bad taste in your mouth. So. I don't know. They they had something good going, and then like I said, if they had eighteen episodes, I think it would have ended up a lot better. But like, I I can't believe this is how they're going to end the series. It's it's so bad. So if I can only change like one thing about the ending, I would just like made it so that like no one gets scared because then it would be bittersweet. But I think that would have been like the better ending than what we had. It would have made much more sense. No, I I still think. One of the couple should have gotten together, whether it be with Haru and Riku or Riku and Shinako. I think Ro should have died. Like the white truck should have came by. <laughs> That's Man. what I was kind of looking for. But regardless of that, I think Riku should have ended up with one of the two girls still, regardless, just because it shows closure. I hate it when the show ends and there's no closure and you're kind of just left wondering like what's going to happen next with these characters, right? Especially after all this time that you spent bonding with the characters, you you would hope for some kind of payoff to 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 occur with one of the characters at least. Uh, I still feel like, he, like, yeah, I don't know. I don't really feel like he, like, Riko didn't really work for that ending though. It just, it was given to him. So that's why I went, I think for this, this specific example, I wouldn't mind having, like, no closure. Like, I think I would rather for it than what we got still. Like, if Haru's boyfriend or classmate f- that went to America came back this episode and hooked up with her, I would have been totally okay with that, too. Uh, but <laughs> alas, he, she's in a different continent, so that's not going to work. So, um, yeah, no, like, there, there's so many things you could have done differently. Like, <laughs> so many things. I just don't get how you had such a good, like, you had such good momentum to take the story to be, like, one of the top dramas or like uh stories of of this season or maybe this year and then you just like wasted it this was like my underage show and now i can't say that anymore yeah this was the shit that i was like so excited to watch on saturdays you know i was like damn like i wonder what's going to happen next you know and then they just shat over all of that (laughs) expectation oh god i was i was so mad (laughs) i was so mad uh this is why I don't get my hopes up for anything, David. This this is the we reason just, why I hate everything. All right, just, <laughs> because made is PTSD is even worse. Like thanks anime. Because no matter how good something is, life just takes it, and just shits in your hand, and just like there you go. You like that? There you go. Oh. <sighs> okay, but I'm done. I think that's I am done. Good enough for. That's all I want to say for the show. That's it for a scene yesterday for me. We're in well episode. said, Koo. I completely agree about this show. Thanks, bro. I know someone's got my back. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. So that's gonna be it for this week's episode. So. Yeah. Damn. Well, that was something else. So we had to, we had two shows end this week. We got the rest ending next week, and then week after that we got uh, so we got Fire Force for the first week of summer, and then we also got the preview for the other anime show. So a lot of sequels too. So look Wait, forward so to we, that. Do we have Fire Force starting next week? Next week, what Fire we Force about, is or? July third. Next, so next week, Ooh, next week, next, next, next Friday, next Monday is oh, next Monday is the twenty ninth. So that's that, that's the last uh, episode for Tower of God and Grape Near and and also Kaguya Sama. And then and then wait, Tog is twelve episodes. I thought it was thirteen. It is thirteen. Thirteen. So it can't end at the same time as Grape Near, right? Or am I tripping? What? No, they, they both have one episode left. Because they're, they're both at 12 right now. So ne- next week is oh, 13. Yeah. My bad, my bad. For some reason, yeah. I thought they were both at 11. No, they're at 12 nope. right now. So, okay. Yeah. So, so, fair, so, fair. so, yeah, Strand. So next week's next week, Monday, is the 29th. That's episode 13 in the season finale. And then the week after that is like July, July something. But the Monday before that is... The, the, the Friday for that is Fire Force. But the yeah. other the other summer shows aren't airing before then, so where do Fire Force, and then we'll talk do previews for the other summer shows. Oh, okay, sounds good. So that's that's in two weeks from now. So 
Dude, so Snafu, that's, man. That's it's so close. So that's the plan. So close. So look forward to it. Look forward to season finale next week. And no, don't look forward to anything. Everything's trash. <laughs> look, look forward to Koo's PTSD. Oh, oh God. <laughs> I'm already moving on to Snafu. Yeah, two weeks. Yeah, I can't wait. So that's going to be it for this week's show. I want to thank the audience for showing up today. Thanks, everyone. I want to thank the panel thank for joining me thanks, this week. I want to enjoy hearing everyone's thoughts, all your passions and emotions for this week. Yes, yes. This is a fun week. I got you, David. I'm going to need you to stay seated. If you feel a rope go around your neck in a moment <laughs> or two, <laughs> I just try to get you to go to sleep a little it's, bit it's earlier. It's all right. Buddy. I know you'll be, you're thinking that that's what's best for me. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. 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 Actually, Koo, did you speak? Yep. Damn, what the hell? Who's running around? That's my upstairs. It's Damn, just open. Like, the noises just sound so, like, they're freaking me out. I don't know why the, the noises <laughs> sound so real. I'm, it's just like, holy shit. Well, hey, what's up, they're, they're directly upstairs. Okay. It's just like, the, just the audio quality, it just sounds so weird. It's just like, it legit sounds like... Somebody's r- running right across, like, <laughs> my ceiling. Sretton, you're the worst. That's the Why? show. Oh. <laughs> oh. Okay. So, Hulu. Right? Hello? What's I found my intro. Hello, Brian. Oh, Sasha, I got these, uh, I got these, like, the little mini gun and things. Do you remember, like, uh, when, oh, yeah, um, yeah. when oh, once you have to I... assemble yourself? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that. <laughs> I, I remember thinking, man, those look so cool, the ones that you guys bought. And yeah. then you, you pulled out those uh, the sheets with the pl- plastic pieces they have to like pull out and <laughs> assemble. And I was like, oh, that's not for me, baby. That looks so awesome, though. I mean, you can see my wing on them. Somewhere. <laughs> nice, dude. <laughs>